One summer night in 2016, a Reddit user submitted a post to r slash android claiming the keyboard on his Galaxy S6 with only UK English packing installed started showing random German words. On the images posted alongside the submission, the SwiftKey keyboard even auto-suggested a random email address. The submission quickly blew up as more and more SwiftKey users reported similar incidents occurring with their keyboards. Eventually, even an official SwiftKey developer account responded. This was a cloud synchronization glitch. The true scale remains unknown, but phone numbers, email addresses, personal words and phrases, SwiftKey users typed on their phones were leaked to random strangers across the globe. And while SwiftKey officially said only a small fraction of users were affected and that the glitch did not pose a security threat, Microsoft, the owner of SwiftKey, temporarily suspended cloud syncing. I couldn't find any case of serious harm as a result of this leak, but the whole case nonetheless begs the question, how much of what SwiftKey users thought they were privately typing on their phones was sent to Microsoft servers? When you think about it, keyboards are a critical point of vulnerability. Whether it's voice input or typing, they are handling your private chats, passwords, contacts, search records, and other sensitive data. Since we're talking about virtual keyboards and not separate physical components, they can see what you do on your screen. And curiously, a lot of keyboards request internet permission in order to provide features, which opens up this huge hole for everything that you ever type on your phone to be sent to third parties. This can bypass end-to-end -end encryption even in apps like Signal, since keyboards capture what you type before it is encrypted by the app. They can potentially know what websites you visit or searches you make even if you use Tor Browser and DuckDuckGo. So let's answer this question. Is your keyboard spying on you? When keyboards are proprietary and require internet access, it is very difficult to determine how much and what type of data they actually collect. Even if you read their privacy policies, that doesn't give you an accurate representation of what's inside their data centers. Unless there's a massive breach exposing their entire database of all of their users to the world. That's what happened to AI Type. This was a popular virtual keyboard on Android and iPhone, claiming over 40 million global users at its peak. That's when on December 5th, 2017, data belonging to over 30 million AI Type customers leaked online. The database was using MongoDB at the default settings. And one major flaw of MongoDB's default settings is that the database is not encrypted, and anyone with an internet connection could browse and download the whole database. 577 gigabytes of data were leaked in total. Now that's a lot of data, and looking at the specifics, you'll quickly understand just about how much data a simple keyboard can collect from your phone. The most highly sensitive information include phone number, full name of the owner, device name and model, mobile network name, screen resolution, user languages enabled, Android version, MZ number, IMEI number, emails associated with the phone, location data, IP addresses, and social media accounts. AI Type also collected almost 6.5 million phone books containing more than 373 million phone records. On its own, this is already bad enough. A keyboard doesn't need to collect any of this information and store it on their servers. How do I know this? Because the keyboard I'm using on my Graphene OS doesn't collect any of this data, and it works flawlessly. AI Type was actually offering a free version of their keyboard, and they needed the data to monetize it. Collecting device identifiers, contacts, social media, and location data means advertisers can target you across different platforms, apps, people, and even places you go to. There are so many third parties involved in this data that you'd probably have to read hundreds of privacy policies just to grasp the level of data collection of this keyboard. And on top of that, now all of this information is available online for anyone to abuse and exploit, which can cause significant harm just because of a poor security practice at a company you trusted your data with. This sort of data collection is unfortunately very common in mobile apps, but this is a virtual keyboard, and that's where things get dark faster than on the Swedish Christmas day. If you read AI Type's privacy policy at the time, you'd be reassured by phrases like user privacy is our main concern, any text entered on our keyboard stays encrypted and private. But the database was not encrypted, and it was not private either. Investigation by ZDNet found evidence of at least some text typed on the AI Type keyboard was recorded and stored by the company. AI Time also claimed that it would never share customer data or learn from password fields, but one table in the leaked database contained 8.6 million entries of text entered on the keyboard that included passwords and email addresses, phone numbers, and web searches. 
When you install a third-party keyboard on your phone, you'll be warned that it may be able to collect all the text you type, including your passwords and payment card numbers. No such warning is given when using pre-installed or first-party keyboards. But that doesn't automatically make native keyboards immune to failure. In 2015, Samsung showcased a major fiasco when more than 600 million mobile device users were affected by a privilege escalating vulnerability in the keyboards that came pre-installed on Samsung phones. And even though Samsung provided a patch, the update wasn't shipped by all the network carriers and the update status on the large number of those remains unknown. If an attacker exploited a bug, they could get access to users' pictures, text messages, sensors, GPS, camera, and microphone, listen in on their voice calls, and install malicious apps without the user knowing. When, of course, it wasn't possible for users to uninstall this default Samsung keyboard. The ability to remotely install malicious apps could easily mean installing a keylogger. At the point of such privilege escalating exploitation, your device is completely in control of the attacker. But such vulnerabilities can be present in any apps including default messengers or browsers and not just keyboards. However, there is a key lesson to learn from here. Samsung did not have to create a new keyboard. Android Open Source Project already provides the default keyboard that is secure and doesn't have any connections to Google. If Samsung wanted to offer extra features, it could have relied on Google's Gboard instead of opening up their users to another third party. This is how you need to think about your security and privacy. Why expose yourself to a large number of third parties if doing so makes you potentially less secure. Keyboards that remember what you type may sound appealingly convenient, but in today's day and age, it is absolutely unnecessary, not to mention unethical, for a keyboard to be sending the text you type to the cloud, even if they have to learn from your input to provide suggestions. Modern keyboards, even those that use these predictive suggestions, do not need to move any data out of your device, and this is why. On stock Android, Gboard is the default keyboard. Gboard has a lot of features, one of which is the ability to search for anything online without opening a new window with Google Search. Those search queries are obviously collected and stored by Google, but the text to type in the message is not. To improve auto suggestions, Gboard uses Fed Reddit Learning, and this is how it works. When you see Gboard showing suggestions as you type, this information is actually locally stored on your phone, alongside a context and whether you chose the suggestions or not. But these suggestions had to come from somewhere, so how could it be so accurate if no typed text is sent to the cloud? It's done through a system of machine learning called Federated Learning. These are AI processes installed on your phone's operating system that summarize the changes from your local Gboard history in a form of update to the learning model. Only this update is sent to the cloud to improve the learning model for everyone. All the training data stays on your device. These individual updates are in addition encrypted with secure aggregation protocol. This means individual updates of hundreds or thousands of users are are grouped together in averages, and only these averages are then inspected in the cloud for machine learning. These averages could still be re-identified, especially with the dawn of quantum computing that could de-anonymize even anonymized datasets. But more on that point in a future video. In our times, this is a major improvement to sending everything to the cloud. But here's the best part. To make this process more secure, Gboard is running inside a sandbox, which means it is isolated from the rest of the operating system and other apps on your phone. The Fed Reddit learning processes are actually happening on the Android operating system itself. This means when you see predictive replies, that's not Gboard's work, it's Android's. And this is really cool because Gboard is Google, Android is not. Android is a free and open source software, which means any third-party keyboards can use the same federated learning predictive algorithm as Gboard although only Gboard gets the latest update on the learning model because the data still belongs to Google. Hence, there is no reason to use a keyboard that sends your typed text to the cloud. So if you install any third-party keyboard that is not open source and requests permission to access the internet, it's probably a good idea to make a switch. The only reasonable permission a keyboard should need are read and write access to user dictionary, control vibration, and run its startup. And even that is asking too much. Because Gboard is proprietary and is so tied to Google Search and other Google products, I would recommend against using it. 
The most privacy-friendly and user-friendly open-source keyboard would be any soft keyboard. If you are on Graphene OS or a custom ROM, there is no reason to install a new keyboard. The standard AOSP keyboard is good enough, so stick with it. But if you are stuck with a default option that sucks at privacy and you don't like any soft keyboard for some reason, OpenBoard, Simple Keyboard, or Flores Board are all free and open-source alternatives you should have a look at. Thank you for watching. Please support this channel with engagement, Monero, or Bitcoin donations. Become my patron or channel member. Have a good one.